Uh -huh. Ajá. No judgment, okay? okay? I don't know how to get into the seminar. You don't? Okay. <laughs> okay. I couldn't just log into it, so. So go to. Hi, Linda. Thank you for joining. We'll be starting in just a few minutes.
Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Becky McGregor, your APS Employee Wellness Coordinator. This is your Benefits Engaged, and it's your um, overview presentation for what's new in 2022 for your APS Employee Benefits. Joining us today are Benefit Specialists Andrea Biggs, Rebecca Wheat, Tisa Vera Vares, and then our um, Specialist, our, our benefit analyst is Ann Johnson. She's on the call as well. They are going to be assisting you in the chat box. And I want to just go over briefly a couple of house cleaning reminders. Make sure your phones and computers, your computer and your phones are muted, please. And you can do that by just scrolling over the little picture of the microphone at the bottom of the screen. You can turn off your camera for the presentation. When we get to the Q&A, uh, you're welcome to turn your camera back on. As I mentioned earlier, you, you can put your questions in the chat box and a benefit specialist can answer that for you, but we will be also addressing questions at the end, especially if in the chat, bo chat box it's a, it's a hot topic or one that we get a lot. We'll definitely address it for everyone in the group. This is a general overview webinar um, on your medical and other benefits for 2022. If you have questions that are really specific to your own situation, we can address that personally after the webinar and we'll definitely take your information as well so we can follow up with you. This session is being recorded. It will be available for on-demand viewing on the APS Employee Wellness YouTube channel. It does take 24 hours for that to get turned around, but they all of our information sessions will be available on the Employee Wellness YouTube channel. So thank you all again for joining us and I am going to send this over to our benefit specialist, Rebecca Wheat, and she's gonna start us off. Rebecca? Hello guys, my name is Rebecca, Rebecca Wheat. I'm with the Employee Benefits Office and a benefit specialist for you. Um, first, we're gonna start off with what's new and what's changing. So we realized that some of the medical plan changes um, started January 1 of 2021, but a lot of these are still new. It's new to some people. They weren't, um, they didn't review their benefits last year. So we want to highlight that Cigna Healthcare was a new medical plan option for 2021, and it'll continue to be an option for 2022. So this means that APS employees now have the four medical plan options to choose from, two EPOs and two PPOs. We'll explain the difference between an EPO and a PPO coming up. So we also wanna remind you that there, are, there were significant changes for the medical plans for 2021, including the premium contributions, co-payments, deductibles, and other out-of-pocket costs for you. And we'll discuss this on the next few slides. So the new plan designs that went into effect for January 1 of 2021, they'll be the exact same for 2022. There's not any plan design changes. Um, there will be some changes for the premiums. That means out of pocket for you for 2022. So, <clears throat> so effective January 1, also, they will be, um, APS will be moving to an enhanced network of contracted dental providers 
for Delta Dental. So, and this will allow all APS employees that have the dental plan um, more choice in selecting a dentist. So more information will be available to all of y'all um, during the dental plan presentation, and that's on Thursday, September 30th at 7.30 a.m. And that will also be available for replay on the um, APS Employee Wellness YouTube channel, as Becky mentioned earlier. So um, <clears throat> open enrollment for 2022 will again be done completely online using the Winocular Workspace system. You'll be able to make your benefit elections anytime during the open enrollment period, which is Wednesday, October 6th through Friday, October 15th. Um, with your benefits that you elect to make changes during that time, they'll go into effect January 1st of 2022. So when the Winocular Workspace is available for your enrollment and changes, you'll be uh, receiving an email in your APS email box welcoming you to the enrollment process and giving you directions on what to do. And we'll also have another webinar on that, on, and it's called How to Do Enrollment Online. And that's going to be next Tuesday, at October 5th, at 3.30 in the afternoon. So one of the major changes um, for 2022 is um, Senate Bill 317. And this was passed by the New Mexico legis Legislature sorry, in 2021, and it means that it's effective for January 2022. There will be no cost, no patient cost share, meaning no money out of your pocket, on behavioral health services. So this means that in-network, and that's very important for you to, to keep in mind, that it's in-network services and prescription medications for treatments, rehabilitation, prevention, and the identification of mental illnesses and substance abuse orders, uh, disorders, sorry. <laughs> You'll have no co-payments, no deductibles, or any co-insurance in 2022. So un under the SB 317, the APS plan is required to cover these in-network services at no cost to you. Covered at 100%, no cost to you. And again, this is an in-network services for mental and behavioral health needs. So we want to go over what an EPO and a PPO means, but I just want to clarify on some of the other terms that we'll be using. And it's and it's really relevant for people who doesn't do not do this all, all the time. So I just wanted to make sure we got this so you would understand some of the, um, the, word, the words that we use. So a provider, when we talk about providers, so that means we're talking about a healthcare professional like a doctor, surgeon, um, nurse physicians, nurse practitioner, um, as well as the hospital and the medical groups, um, um, and, um, including mental health counselors and therapists. Sorry about that. Um, so in-network, so when we tell you you need to see an in-network provider for, for using your, um, the, the plan that you selected, when we say in-network, that means we're referring to a provider or a healthcare facility that are part of that insurance plan's network that has a negotiated a discount or a contract for the company or the organization, in this case, APS. So, and this will also be available for um, replay on the internet for the APS, well, in, internet, sorry. Out of network, out of network means that a doctor, healthcare provider, medical group, or facility, they do not have to be contracted with the health provider that you choose. But you do have to keep in mind that this does result in some higher process, uh, higher prices out of pocket for you. It can, not always, but it, it can. So 
So um, APS offers four health care health plan carriers and two types of plans, an EPO and a PPO. So to describe what an EPO is, it's also an EPO is an exclusive provider organization. That's what an EPO means. An EPO, our EPO plans um, are True Health, uh, New Mexico, and Presbyterian. And which that, what that means, they only offer in-network benefits. And these, the plans are kind of higher for your premiums out of your check each pay week, every payday. Um, but you have less, your co-pays are slightly less, your deductibles are a little less, and your out-of-pockets are a little less. Um, the employees who choose these plans will need to access all their medical care from providers contracted within the health plan. So that's True Health and Presbyterian do not have out-of-state in-network coverages, except, of course, in emergency and ER services, urgent and emergent services. Um, a PPO is a preferred, preferred provider organization. Um, our Blue Cross Blue Shield and Cigna Healthcare, they offer in-network and out-of-network benefits, both in and out-of-network. These plans cost a little less out of your paychecks. These plans have a slightly lower premium with higher co-pays, higher deductibles and higher out-of-pocket max. Employees who choose these plans will have an option of in and out of network coverage. However, if you go to an out of network, it'll be more expensive. With a PPO, you do you have in network out of state coverage. And this is very important if you have dependents that are going to out of state, um, going to school out of state and you want you want to cover them under your insurance, you need to make sure that you select a PPO plan during um, this open enrollment to make sure that they're covered. Um, as mentioned earlier, the important difference between an EPO and a PPO is where you can access the service. So an EPO, you need to see providers contracted with the plan that you select, Presbyterian uh, contracted providers, or True Health contracted providers. The, um, except in urgent and emergent, uh, urgent and emergent situations. And with a PPO plan, you have the option to go out of network, although it'll cost you some a little bit more money. So uh, this is questions that we get asked all the time. Which um, network um, can I go if I select, say, Blue Cross Blue Shield? Um, this is some good information for you. Um, for your in-network access in the greater Albuquerque area, True Health and Blue Cross are generally contracted with Loveless Medical Systems and those medical groups, UNM Hospital and UNM Medical Groups, and also Optum Medical Group. So both True Health and Blue Cross are also contracted um, with New Mexico within New Mexico providers outside of the Albuquerque area. Um, Blue Cross also contracts with providers across the U.S. and in many foreign countries, and you also have out-of-network access as well. Um, so in Albuquerque, Presbyterian and Cigna are generally contracted with Presbyterian Health Systems, Presbyterian Medical Group. Both are contracted with New Mexico providers outside of the Albuquerque area. Um, Presbyterian Health Plan is also contracted with Optum Medical Group here in Albuquerque. And Cigna Healthcare also contracts with providers across the U.S. and have out-of-network benefits as well. And again, just for you to, um, to emphasize this, can't emphasize it enough to know the difference between the EPO plan and the PPO plan. So if you have an EPO, if you select an EPO plan, you need to make sh um, sure the providers that you see currently are within that plan. Um, Presbyterian Health Plan contracted providers and True Health New Mexico contracted providers. 
So those are EPO. And this plan has, does not have any out-of-state in-network services, besides the emergency room, of course. But you need to keep that in mind. If you have children or are going to school um, in the fall, you are not, um, make sure, make sure that you select a PPO plan and not an EPO plan. <clears throat> so we're going to show you um, exactly where to find the comparison grid, chart grids, with some, uh, with, and review some of the cost, the cost changes. <clears throat> All right, so, and Becky's going to toggle back and forth with me here, if we can keep it up together. <laughs> As previously mm -hmm. mentioned, one important difference between an EPO plan and a PPO plan is where you can access services, which medical providers are in network and which are not. So this is After on, we review this. I'm sorry, I just wanna just clarify, I apologize, Rebecca. This is on, on the APS.edu page under benefits. You'll find this tab. I took you right to it. So this is available to you under APS.edu and you hit employee benefits. Okay, Thank ahead. you, Betsy. Um, as we mentioned, the difference between a PPO and an EPO is very important. Um, the, so a primary, um, your primary care office visit copayments are $20 on the EPO plan and $30 on the in-network PPO provider. $20 on the EPO, $30 on the PPO plans. Specialists are 50 and 60 retrospectively. Um, your deductibles and out of pocket. Um, yeah, yeah. Your deductibles and your out of pockets. They've increased. They increased in 2021. Um, <clears throat> but you'll see the grid for the deductibles for single, double, and family. And and just as Becky said, this comparison grid will also will be available. On, it's up. It's available on the benefit department webpage and we'll have a link for you at the end of this uh, presentation so now we're going to go back to the benefits website to look at some payroll contribution costs that'll go into effect for january 21 2022 the premium is the amount that comes out of your check twice a month Medical pen premiums will be incre will have an increase for January 1 of 2022. The dental plan and vision pre uh, plan premiums, they'll stay as what they are currently. There's, there will not be an increase in that. So the definition of a single, did I? Sorry, I'm just having fun. It was, it's the computer is slow and it, <laughs> It's not. There we go. There we go. All right. So this is really important for for people to realize and understand the definition of both single, double, and family. So of course, the single is just you, the employee, enrolling into the benefits, and that's where. Example, single Blue Cross Blue Shield is 100. If you make more than 45,000, your premium is $108.82 per paycheck. Double means <clears throat> you, the employee, plus one. And that one can be your child or your spouse. They're both con considered dependents for you. So double is you plus one, employee plus the spouse or an employee plus the child. And so, again, if you go to the Blue Cross Blue Shield, double, that's two. That's um, for you plus one. Um, making more than 45,000, example, is 217.64 per paycheck. The family is you plus two. It could be you and five children, seven children. It could be you, your spouse, and a child. So it's you plus two equals family. And then under family, it gives you your, your amount of like two nights, it's 293.81 for a family. Every paycheck 
if you earn more than $45,000 a year. And on this grid, it tells you what plan, the four different plans, single, double, and family. And there's three different um, tiers if you make more than 45, if you earn 39,500 39, to 44,9999. Middle tier and the lower tier if you make less than 39.5. That's how you will determine the premium for you and your situation. If it's you and plus one or you plus your two or just you yourself. So that's a pretty important um, thing to remember when you're determining um, one year what benefits you're going to choose and two so you can set up to have some understanding of what is going to be coming out of um, your paychecks each payday. Okay. And just to note that these are the medical premium rates. We do have the non-medical premium rates up. They did not change from last year to this year. So we just, I just want to highlight that for you. And we also have the food service premium rates here and the non-medical food service premium rates as well. Thank you for, for bringing that up, Becky. Can you click on that non-medical premium rates just to, just to give it a, a view? So again, these are bi-monthly payroll deductions. This is going to be out of every paycheck. And if you'll scroll down some, oh, you, they fall under the same tiers. And it, it explains to you for here, the only difference between your premiums here is your Delta Dental and your basic, your Delta Dental Comprehensive and compre uh, Delta Dental Basic. The definitions are a little different only for your Delta Dental and explains to you right here what they are. Employee plus spouse. And if you're electing comprehensive, is 1566. And it's a little more if it's just you, an employee, and your child. And this could be employee and, ch and one child or employee and five children. It doesn't matter, however many children you have, as long as it's your spouse is not enrolled in that. So that's the difference. Employee plus spouse is 1566. Employee plus child or children is 1703. Employee plus two is their family. So I just wanted to make sure you understood the difference between um, Delta Dental has a, a different definition um, regarding um, the premiums. All right, so, so well, we do know, let's wait for that to load up, there we go. So we do know that premium increases are a challenge, but there is a bright spot but we do have a slight decrease in the Express Scripts plan um, with the change of the out-of-pocket maximum. Um, currently, the out-of-pocket maximum is 3,000 for a single and 4,000 for a family. So starting in 2022, it's gonna be re, um, the new out-of-pocket for um, single is gonna be 2,850. And family is going to be is 3,700. So it's a decrease, and that's a that's a good thing if you are um, if you use your Express Scripts quite a bit. It's very important for that. Um, also, APS will not be accepting applications for additional life insurance or long-term disability during open switch enrollment. You may apply at any time during the year except during the month of October, um, with subject um, to evidence of insurability. So the only exception to that is if you currently have additional life insurance and you want to add a child, life, a child um, additional life on your children. And that has to be done during open switch enrollment. So again, ad adding additional life insurance or long-term disability can be done anytime during the year. Um, so, and you're subject to evidence of insurability. We're not, you're not allowed to enroll in that during open enrollment in October, 
But the only time you can add life insurance for your children is during open enrollment. But you have to have um, additional life insurance on yourself in order to do that. So that's a can be a little tricky, but um, your specialist will help you through that. Um, and the, the, the other thing is you need to make sure you re-enroll, you have to re-enroll in ASI Flex every single year during open enrollment because it's, a, it's the only time you can enroll into the flexible spending account. Um, it's a calendar year, January to December. Um, is, um, the Flex is a pre-tax deduction that goes into a separate account to save for medical health expenses like co-pays and other out-of-pocket expenses. Um, you can also elect the FSA, um, dependent care a FSA, um, for qualified child care expenses. And we'll have some more information on that on the flexible spending account on Friday, October 1st at 7.30. And that will also be recorded for playback. And that'll be on the APS Employee Wellness YouTube channel. Um, we also, we want to remind you about the Voluntary Retirement Savings Plan. Um, there's a brief webinar on this subject on the Wellness um, Employee Wellness YouTube channel. And you can find more information on this through the benefit page at APS.edu or on the Wellness um, Financial Wellness Way folder on the intranet, the Employee Intranet Wellness page. Um, you can enroll into the Voluntary Retirement Savings Plan any time during the year. And I am going to give you some closing reminders and then we can open it up for questions. I was just going to put in the email, the um, web address just for that APS um, EDU Human Resource Benefit page. Um, closing reminders, insurance company specific information sessions are going to be all this week. And that is on that um, employee wellness calendar. Uh, we, we structured the information ses sessions either at 7.30 or 3.30, and we are recording them, of course. Um, but if you want some plan specific information on Presbyterian, that's tomorrow morning at 7.30. True Health New Mexico is tomorrow afternoon. Blue Cross Blue Shield is Wednesday at 7.30 and Cigna is Wednesday at 3.30. So those will be going on um, this week along with Delta Dental, Davis Vision, and as Rebecca mentioned, um, ASI Flex. So um, we are doing enrollment completely online at, through Winocular and uh, we had a great showing for that last year. So we, we don't think people are gonna have too many hiccups with it, but we're gonna offer this walking you through the process webinar again on Tuesday, October 5th, which is right before open enrollment kicks off. So if anybody does have any um, questions about that, you can join us on Tuesday. We are having the wellness fair this year, Thursday, October 7th at Bernafacio from 8 to 3.30. And we are going to have um, vaccinations, mammograms, blood donors. We have a lot of community vendors coming. We also have all your medical and non-medical providers who are going to be there. Um, so if you ever, if you still have questions or want to talk to someone further about um, your plans and your benefits, you can do that. We'll have an open enrollment um, specialist or a benefit specialist there with laptops. If you do need assistance through the open enrollment process online, we will have assistance there with the benefit specialists as well. We are raffling for prizes. We're going to have fitness demos. We're going to have a mini farmer's market. So it's going to be a lot of fun uh, for you, just in addition to the open enrollment benefits information and, and all of our wonderful vendors um, that we're going to have there, New Mexico Healthcare Retiree Authority, New Mexico ERB. We're going to have just a lot of resources open for you all. And so we do invite you to join us that day. It is fall break. So um, please leave, leave your name in the chat box um, so that we can raffle. We are giving prizes for people who attend these sessions. So if you leave your name in the chat box, we can make sure and put you in that hat to draw your name. And if you all have any questions, we want to make sure we answer them now. Um, Andrea, 
I noticed that yes. you were muted. Did you have something you wanted to say? I did. I wanted to just kind of piggyback on you mentioning that if you guys need help in processing your paperwork, the only day available for you guys to get on the computers and us help you will be that October 7th at the wellness fair. So please do not be coming down to city center requesting our help at that time um, or during the rest of open enrollment. Open enrollment, if you need help and you need us to assist you in filling out your paperwork, the only day you have is that October 7th at Bernifacio. Thank you for emphasizing that, Andrea. I don't think we can enough because I know in past years it's been here at City Center. We just really want to encourage everybody, but that's the opportunity at Bernifacio at the Wellness Fair for that in-person online experience assistance. So thanks, Andrea. Um, I did mention that we're going to have vaccinations. We are going to have many vaccinations, the COVID-19 as well, as well as um, the booster for those who are uh, qualify for that. Um, and this is all about knowing your benefits and engaging in your health and wellness. And part of that engagement is uh, just connecting with us through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Um, we, I put out monthly wellness newsletters. We always have a section in the perspective every other week. We have the employee wellness um, event calendar that also gives daily tips, motivation, and I always keep programming and events information in there. So we just want you all to know your benefits and know where to go to get those and to um, you know, log into it. And that's why, again, I put the link to the APS.edu human resources benefits um, link right there. Share this information. We appreciate you letting your colleagues know. Um, and just engage for your health and your family. We, we're here to help you. And um, to that end, please, uh, does anybody have any questions? If you do, put it in the chat box or raise your hand, and we will start addressing those questions for you. And if no one has questions, then awesome. <laughs> oh, okay, Carla, you raised your hand. Go for it. Yes, yeah, so I just it's just a quick question. Um, last year, in the open enrollment, we were able to do any changes or no changes at all um, to our benefits. But for our life insurance, we didn't have to do anything. Is it the same this year that if we want to continue with our life insurance, uh, we don't have to do anything to address that? You you don't. We only ask people engage it somehow so that they're aware of the cost changes. And, and so um, that's, that's why we ask you to go in and go through, look at your benefit statement, look at the new plan um, comparison grid and the premium payroll deduction charts. We just ask that people do that so that they're just aware of come January 1st, there will be a different amount taken out of your paycheck. You don't have to change providers or anything like that. I mean, you don't have to engage the process and, and it will automatically roll over um, but we just don't want anybody to be surprised come January 1st. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Yes. And it's the same for the life insurance, correct? The life insurance. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When you said I didn't understand the life part, I'm sorry. I apologize. So, um, Marsha has a question. Do we qualify for a third COVID shot as an APS employee? Yes, you do, but you also have to have, be immunocompromised. I, I'm putting out um, the exact verbiage from uh, the CDC, from our benefit, um, our pharmacy benefit providers, so everyone will know um, who, kind of, who qualifies for that third shot. Also, you have to have had Pfizer, because it's only approved for Pfizer. So if you had the Moderna shot, you don't qualify for the booster. They are expecting, I think, some of that to be approved soon, but just so you know. Andrea Anaya, how do I find out what plan I have currently? So that should be on your paycheck stub. Um, also, in any of the benefit specials can chime in here. If you go into Lawson, I believe you can see that too as well. And you are going to be receiving in your email box a benefits statement that is going to tell you 
um, all the benefit selections that you made for 2021? And Ann Johnson is in answering that question. Yes, Marsha, it does. The COVID booster includes teachers. It does include teacher. The, the, the caveat though is for immunocompromised and Pfizer. And um, I could, if, if my computer isn't too slow, I could pull up the exact wording. Um, so teachers are considered in that group, but they have um, some other wording around first in, immunocompromised individuals in those high risk op occupations. Becky, can I ask, answer George's question? Sure. So George, you have a couple of options depending on when your wife is retiring. That is considered a qualifying life event. And so if she is retiring prior to these benefits going into effect, please remember that open enrollment, anything that you sign up for open enrollment is not effective until January 1st of 2022. So if your wife is retiring prior to that, so that you're not left without benefits, you will want to get in touch with your specialist and we can walk you through and see what is the best one for you, whether it's a qualifying life event or just to do it now during open switch enrollment. And this is Rebecca. George, um, I'm your benefit specialist. So if you want to reach out to me, um, I can give you my phone number or my email, my phone number is 889-4815, and my email is rebecca.wheat, just like the bread, wheat, at aps.edu. Thank you, and I'll, I'll do that. And I am just waiting for my computer to come up to give that exact wording for you, Marsha, but I can also email it to you. Um, Marsha, that's a really good question. Um, that you received a replacement Prez ID card today prior to open enrollment. Is that typical? Did um, I don't know if any of the specialists or Anne, if, I, Marcia, I would say get in touch with Rebecca. Um, she had given out her phone number and she, I, Rebecca, do you want me to put it, type it out for you too? Yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Andre. And just so that, and just get in touch with Rebecca, okay? Okay. All right. And I am still waiting for my email to come up that has the exact verbiage from the pharmacists. <laughs> Sorry, but I'll make sure I get that to you. All right, everybody. I want to thank you all for joining us um, today. I'm going to stop recording. Thank you all for joining us. And I also put up our main page as well as our um, main email address. If you need any assistance, please reach out. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you all. Thank you, Paula.